The journey began ten years ago mm -hmm. With successful living as our goal We came together and formed a tribe To engage God's word so we can thrive Come and join the celebration A ten years of inspiration God's given us revelation Every Sunday, one of the ten years of conversation Yeah, yeah, yeah Along the way we heard God say Get out of the boat and live by faith he also said, come off a mule, your voice is valuable, speak the truth, come and join the celebration, ten years of inspiration, God's given us revelation every Sunday morning for ten years, it's a conversation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years have passed and we're on the move. Can't wait to see what God will do. We now know that it's worth the while. Living for Jesus makes us smile. Come and join the celebration. Ten years of inspiration. God's given us revelation every Sunday morning for ten years. The conversation, yeah, yeah, every Sunday morning, yeah, 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 ten years of conversation, yeah. Ten years celebrating conversations at 7 a.m. in some form or fashion, whether it is in person or it was virtually. We have made it 10 years. And to Deborah Smith, oh my goodness, the song is just awesome. To TK, thank you for the graphics. I tell you what, I was in the background just to pop in the movie. Y'all know I like to dance, right? So I was just over there just to pop in and everything with a yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is so exciting. It has been literally 10 years that we have been bringing some type of word, inspiration, practices, uh, God's principles to you. That includes Bishop Jerry Maynard. Uh, in the in person at the church in the fellowship hall, a couple of times we had to go in the computer lab uh, or just virtually. But we've been doing this 10 years. And as I said to you all before, on uh, next year, 2022, we actually will celebrate five years of being on the platform. So five years that we literally have been on Facebook sharing with you the truths of God in this format. And I tell you what, I am excited about what God is not only doing, but what he's going to do. And listen, Bishop Maynard is going to make his debut uh, sometime this month. And so we are already preparing for it. And so uh, I'm so excited about it. Uh, he'll be coming back just to kind of see who's all on to get some shout outs and some things like that. Uh, he was traveling on yesterday and I just talked to him last night. I said, don't even worry about coming on this morning because he traveled, went to Indiana he, uh, Cathedral Praise. He will be at church today. So don't think he's not going to be there. He's going to be at church today. But I just thought, you know, he probably needs to sleep in. Uh, and then he can pop in here either next Sunday or the following Sunday. But listen, he will be coming back so he can celebrate too and join in the celebration. But guess what? You're here. And that's what's important is that you are in the house to celebrate for this month of October and you've been here. So thank you so much. Uh, we always want to give a shout out to Bishop Major and Dr. Mary T for just laying the foundation and, and, and allowing us just to come on and then for us to even be doing this for this length of time. And so I'm so excited. 
So let's just say hello. First of all, Deborah Smith is on and she's the one who created that song. And those are her vocals. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if her daughters are doing it, but it is just, it is definitely jazzy and we're celebrating. So hats off to you. Thank you so much. TK is in the house. What's going on? I see Dr. Perry. What's up? Hey, Sheila. Sheila's been hanging in there for years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah Derrickson. Thank you so much. Celebrating with you all. Hey, Gwendolyn Hayes. How are you? God bless you. So glad you're here. Yvette Jones, what's going on? All right. Debbie Keener, God bless you. Hey, Bridget, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, Elder Beatrice is in the house. Vera Cranford. Oh, my goodness. You guys are popping in here. Kathleen Collins and Deborah Long and Pastor Andre Crispin. Oh, my Lord. Hey, Evangelist Glover. She's out there in the beach and doing it up. I love it. Loving the vacay. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. This is so exciting. Mary Ray, what's going on? How are you? Hey, Isla Campbell, how are you? Vincent Carter's in the house. What's up, Pastor Carter? Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad to see everybody early in the morning celebrating these 10 years. You all know it's a glorious Sunday morning in the year 2021, and there is celebration in the atmosphere. 10 years of conversations as the song said. I just love how she picked up some of those uh, topics that we talked about, getting out the boat and putting your voice on, you know, don't let them mute, but come off a of mute and speak the truths and your voice is valuable and powerful. I mean, she just picked up so many things in that song. So uh, I appreciate it so much. Godmother's in the house. Hey, Lady Giles, how are you? Hey, okay, Trisha King. Hey, how are you? So good to see you all today. So this is exciting. Uh, and so we're going to just talk, we're laying a foundation because in order to do what we do, and that's anything that we do as believers. We have to do this by faith. So this month, we're going to be talking about faith and increasing our faith, building our faith, strengthening our faith, because the Bible says, tells us that the just shall live by faith. But in addition to that, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it takes faith to accomplish anything that we have. And one of the things that I um, love about this topic is, uh, Bishop Manor, this is part of his foundational truths. This is a part of the pillars that's in his ministry. And so when he comes in, he's just going to be sharing maybe some just nuggets of, of truths and wisdom um, when he joins us um, on the next Sundays uh, so that he can share with us about just faith and what it means to walk by faith. And uh, we're going to be celebrating 80 years of his life in this earth in December, December the 11th and 12th. And I'll share a little bit more about that. But we'll be celebrating that. And uh, he's been in ministry since he was 17, pastoring since he was 22. So he'll have some great jewels just to leave with us to the, and choose to deposit in us about walking by faith. And so I can't wait to have him back on so he can share those things with us. And so we're going to be out of Romans, the 10th chapter. We'll cover the first through the 17th verses throughout um, this month. And it may be some other verses if he has that he wants to add to them, but we definitely will cover those um, one through 17. And so we're going to try to do one through eight today. And so that's going to be Romans, Romans 10, one through uh, eight on today, but one through 17 is what we'll cover. And uh, if I had to say something this month, we did it by faith. We did it by faith. We did this thing by faith faith. These 10 years and anything else that we've been able to do has been done by faith. And you have to know that. Uh, and I know, you know, for your, I mean, for yourself, if you're just truthful about it, I, I'm, I'm very transparent, probably as you all can uh, tell, just very transparent. I couldn't do this on my own. There is nothing that I could have done. I couldn't, I couldn't script this correctly. I couldn't order the steps properly. Uh, I wouldn't be able to have, you know, shaped and molded uh, in, in this way. And the only way that I've been able to do anything that is worth uh, talking about, <laughs> worth identifying, worth signifying is by faith. So we did it by faith. So let's go into the word of God. We're going into Romans 10, uh, 1 through 8. Let's see. We got some more people that jumped in. Hey, hey. Jayma, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? So glad you're there. Okay, so let's go. Uh, Romans 
chapter 10, verse 1, and we read, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for Israel or for you is for their salvation. Uh, for I testify about them that they have a certain enthusiasm for God, but not in accordance with correct and vital knowledge about him and his purpose. Uh, for not knowing about God's righteousness, which is based on faith and seeking to establish their own righteousness based on works. They did not submit to God's righteousness. Uh, for Christ is the end of the law. It leads to him and his purpose is fulfilled in him for granting righteousness to everyone who believes in him as savior. For Moses writes that the man who practices the righteousness, which is based on the law with all its intricate demands, shall live by it. But the righteousness based on faith, which produces a right relationship with him, says the following. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead, as if we had to be saved by our own efforts doing the impossible. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word, the message, the basis of faith, which we preach. And let me just pick up that ninth verse uh, and go ahead and just put it in there and we'll say it to you. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognize in his power, authority and majesty as, as God and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. And so uh, this is what we're going to be just talking about this, because what we do at Conversations, what we do in anything that we are carrying out throughout the weeks, throughout the months, it should always lead to salvation. It should always lead to having a right relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's why we're coming back to me, to the basics. We're coming back to the basics just to remind us that all the things that we do, getting out the boat, coming off of unmute, you know, making our voice valuable and powerful, uh, any of those sub subjects that we've talked about, poking the bear, everything that we have discussed over the years, the span of 10 years, it should lead us to being in the right standing with Jesus Christ and the right standing with our father. If it has not led us to get in our lives and, and, and making us and put, placing us in the right position with Christ, then to me, it's been in vain. And I cannot, I don't want to live this life in vain. I've got to live by faith and know that what we are doing, we're doing it for God. Everything that you do for Christ, only what you do, the songwriter said, for Christ will last. And everything else, you know, could just fade away. So let's just go back to the top. And as you probably realize, we're in the Amplified Bible on this one. But it says, brothers and sisters, and this is just kind of just a shout out from Paul to the church that's in Rome. And he says, brothers and sisters, my prayer, listen to that. My prayer to God for you is for your salvation. And oftentimes I think that we even forget that. A lot of times we move so far from, we pray for everything else. And I'm not saying you don't need to pray because a prayer life is important, but understand this. Salvation is the foundation to everything that we do. And without the salvation, even praying for other things, it doesn't really matter. You know, we can pray for our loved ones if they're not saved, but we should be praying for their salvation. We should be praying for our salvation. And yes, once you get saved, you don't have to keep saying, God save me again and again. You're working on that salvation or it's a process. But you do want to remind yourself <laughs> when you're talking to God to check your heart, cleanse your heart. Lord, look at me and make sure that I'm in right standing with you. The psalmist said in, in Psalms that try the reins of my heart to make sure that I'm standing on even ground or that my heart's in the right position with you. So it's so important to understand salvation is the beginning of the relationship. Salvation is the beginning of of the relationship. Hey, Cloretta and Roxy and Renetta, how are you all today? So salvation is the beginning of this relationship. Okay. So even you, you can say, you know, I go to church all the time. I hang out. People have sing. do you know people have sing in choirs and never been saved? People have come to church for years and never gave their heart to Christ, never asked uh, Jesus to, to reign and rule in their life. 
they just come to church. They've been going to church and they feel good. Sometimes they come on those special days like Easter and Mother's Day and Christmas or around the holidays. But I want to tell you that salvation, giving your heart to Christ and asking God to reign and rule in your life, being in right standing with him, turning your heart towards them. That's the beginning. So that's the prayer is for salvation. And since for I testify about them that they have a certain enthusiasm for God, but not in, co- in accordance with correct and vital knowledge about him and his purposes. So let's just pause right here and let's talk about this. Because uh, right now we're celebrating 10 years and there's a lot of excitement in the atmosphere. We're all pumped up and we got a little song and it makes you move and, you know, and you get excited about it. But if you don't have the right purpose, if you don't understand Christ, if you don't understand why you're celebrating, celebration within itself is okay. But knowing why you are celebrating is far greater to know why you are celebrating and, you know, and the purpose that you have with, you know, in this earth. Uh, One of the things that I love about this is that God has given all of us a purpose in this earth. Every one of us. Uh, My purpose is different than yours. But when we link our purposes together, we fulfill the mission and the mandate that Jesus Christ gave to the believers. He told us to go out into the highways and the byways and to compel them to come. He told us to go out and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And so when we link up our purposes together, we're all able to be strengthened to fulfill the purpose that God has mandated for all believers in this earth. We can't do it alone. We got to do it together. We got to link our purposes together. So that's why we have to make sure that we don't get jealous of each other. There's no envy that's going on. We have to make sure that we're strengthening each other, encouraging each other, that we're not looking at each other and saying, what are you doing? Judging each other. But we've got to link up together, purpose to purpose. I love that. Purpose to purpose. Let's link together so we can fulfill the mandate, the mission that Christ has called for us to do in this earth. He's commissioned us to go out, to go out into all the worlds, in all the worlds, and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is that Jesus saves to the uttermost. Jesus saves. So now listen, it, there's some people who have a lot of enthusiasm, but eh, they're not doing this thing correctly. And we all know we bumped into them. We see them. <laughs> We see them when they come on uh, media platforms. And and, and this is something I love when I see on Facebook when people say, you're doing all these preachers. You know how people are posting all these scriptures and and these uh, truths of God and and, and meaner than the Dickens, as they say. Or they have no love and no tolerance for anyone. They're always putting people down. They're always uh, judging people, sizing people up. Let me tell you something. You can post all day long. You can even preach in a pulpit every Sunday, midweek services. Uh, You can say, God bless you every time you see somebody. But if your lifestyle is not lining up with the word of God, then it is not. It it, it doesn't mean anything. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's in vain. What Christ is calling for us to do, especially in this last and evil day, and we've been saying last evil day for so long, but in this last and evil day, is for our walk and our talk to mirror each other. Your walk and your talk should be mirroring each other. The word of God is a mirror, and your walk and your talk should mirror each other. If your walk and talk are not mirroring each other, then you we've got some work to do. If I'm talking about love, love your neighbor as yourself, my walk should be that way. If you should be able to come into my neighborhood and my neighbors should at least tell you that I speak to them or that when I come out, I'm, 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 I'm uh, presenting myself in a way that is Christ like, you know, I shouldn't be, you know, the meanest person on the block. I shouldn't be the most anal person on the block. I said it. You shouldn't be that way. Your walk and your talk should mirror each other. You can't say I got a prayer life and you are cussing folks out all the time. Praying and cussing are not mirroring each other. (laughs) You can't say that you have a life of faith and there's no fruit. Faith and fruit go together. 
I want to put that out there. Did you all hear me say that? Praying and cussing opposite. Faith and fruit go together. You have a lifestyle of faith. You should be producing fruit, which means you should have manifestation showing up somewhere in your life. You can't say that I live by faith and there's no fruit. There's nothing to show for your faith walk. Ah, that's good right there. Faith and fruit go together. So we we have sometimes we had it in the Bible at this point in time when Paul's writing to the Romans. He's saying to them that there's some people that's out there and we know about them, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, you know, they were out there and they were doing these, you know, teaching the Mosaic law, but they weren't living by them. Their purpose for teaching it was just off. Their purpose for teaching the Mosaic law was really to build them up. They were getting paid. They were on the payroll of the Romans. They were on the Romans <laughs> payroll to teach it and then to slant it so that it would help guide the, uh, the, the, the Jews and the Gentiles towards the Roman government because the Roman government, which was trying to implement, if, if you judge, do your history, anybody took history, this is not biblical history. This is just history. You remember when the Roman empire was so strong and the reason why it was strong is because it brought in a lot of revenue. They were able to put in, I mean, a lot of the things that we deal with today, a lot of the uh, practices we have today came from the Roman empire. Some of the gladiators and things like that, the uh, competitions, a lot of those things came when the Romans began to rule and reign and their era was for the long time. Think about this, football, basketball, any of those sports, it really stemmed from from the Roman Empire, they started uh, having challenges and you would compete against each other. Gladiators and things like that took place during that time period. And so the Roman Empire was such a strong influence on the world. And so at the time, uh, the Sadducees and Pharisees, they were on the payroll to get the Jews. I'm, I'm, I'm doing some historical teaching here. They were they were they were on the payroll to get the Jews to begin to move their their teachings to line more with how they were living. And if you all know the Romans, they serve many gods. Uh, polytheism. Theism. So they had many gods, many gods that they served. And so they wanted them to kind of stop talking about the true one and true living God. And so in order for them to do that, you know, just uh, uh, I'm going to say something. It's just like when the politicians start coming to your church, they want you to, you know, they may say a certain few things that, you know, get you to believe that they believe in your one and true living God. But they want you to, to, to incorporate some of their truths into what you're doing and align it up. So that's why you have to be careful. You have to know the word of God for yourself. And you got to know what God is saying for you. Uh, that's when I tell people, listen. Find it in the Bible. I'm good. If it's not in the Bible, mm, I'm, I'm going to question it. And, you know, I don't have a problem with that. And, and I may not follow it. And I'm, I'm not going to tell you not to follow it, but I'm not going to follow it. And then I'm not going to let you influence me because there are some things, some practices that we have in place. I'm telling you now, there's some practices we have in place that uh, they don't have anything to do with what, what Jesus was telling us to do. <laughs> I had a meeting yesterday. I was talking to them talking to the people there. One thing that they said, they said, Jesus came in and he was saying, okay, what I want you to do is not look at people on the outside, but really look at their heart. That's what Jesus came in to do. And they said, it said, it, it almost appears as if we heard what Jesus said, said, yeah, we got it. And we turned around and did the total opposite. Because most of the things that we judge and most of the things that we look at and most of the things that we focus on when it comes to this walk with Christ is about the outside. Think about it. We look at the outward man. And that's what most of our focus is. And so it's not only on the heart. It's not on the heart. It's not looking at what's going on inside. And I tell you all this all the time because it's in the Bible, right? That uh, everything flows from the heart. You know, our life flows from our heart. Everything stems from the inward man. So whatever we do, it comes from the inward man. Okay, so first question on the table, because I just said to you, uh, I'm not going to follow your truths. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. If it's not lined up with the word of God, but how do you, how do you, how do you differentiate between God's truth and man's truth? Oh, that's going to be the question on the table because now we're 10 years in. So we should be able to differentiate between God's truth and man's truth. 
And what do you do? That's going to be two questions. How do you differentiate between God's truth and man's truth? And then what do you do when there's a difference? How do you handle that? Okay. So how do you differentiate between God's truth and man's truth? And then what do you do? <laughs> and man's truth. And then uh, what do you do with it? You know, how do you handle it? So that's going to be the first question on the table. How do you differentiate between God's truth and man's truth? And then what do you do with it? So that's the first question that's on the table. We'll come to that second question. How do you differentiate between these, the two of them? I know like for myself, um, sometimes man will say, you know, you, you can't do this. And, uh, and, and I'm going to respect you if it's your preference and you are over whatever that organization is. Just like if I go to a restaurant or go to a business and they tell me I have to do certain things, I'm going to follow your preference. But if you say to me, if you say to me that, hey, you know, you're going to go to hell because you did this, I, I'm not going to receive that. Okay, I'm not going to receive it. In, inside of me. I'm not going to let it get in me and then deter me from living a joyous, a peaceful, and a grateful life that God has given to me. Okay. Hey, Sylvia Law, how are you? It's Sharon Davis. You jumped in here. What's going on? So, okay. So that, that's what I'm saying. Differentiate between God's truth and man's truth. Okay. So some people have a preference, just like when you go to someone's house, they invite you over and, and we've talked about this before. And they say, you know, in my house, I don't wear shoes around the house. So if you don't mind taking your shoes off at the door, you know, and walking your socks. Now you can make a difference. Listen, hear me when I say this. Sorry, we're going to, we're going to, we're just going to do this right quick. Hear me when I say this. If you go to someone's house and they say, I don't, we don't wear our shoes in the house. So you can take your shoes off at the door. You have the right to say, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know that, but I, I wasn't prepared to take my shoes off. And you can get back in your car and go home, either set a new meeting, a time or something to that effect. Or you can come on in, take your shoes off and enjoy whatever, you know, uh, was on the agenda. But you have a choice. You have a choice, to, you know, to, to decide. So that's a preference. That's somebody's preference. You may not do that at your house, but when you come to someone else's house, that may be what they ask you to do. I remember when, you know, sometimes when people are coming to my house, I don't take my shoes off, but they do, you know? And so I don't tell them that they can't take their shoes off or if they want to have the shoes on, that's fine. If they want to take their shoes off, that's fine. But I can just tell by the way that they practice when they come into the door by taking their shoes off, that that's what they do at their house. But at my house, it's not a requirement. And that happens as well. You know, sometimes when people come into your presence, they may do certain things because that's their practice. That's their practice. That's what they do. And, and you have to be able to either embrace it, accept it, deal with it, or how you handle it. Okay, so I don't hear anybody popping in there. How do you differentiate? How do you differentiate between God's truths and man's truths? And then how? what do you do with it when you see the difference? I don't see anybody having a conversation. Come on. Okay, so Kathleen, come on. I'm so glad somebody jumped in there. Thank you, Kathleen. God's truth can always be found in the Bible and I follow it. Okay. All right. So that's one, that's one way <laughs> of, of identifying it. It is in the Bible. Okay. And it does not go against what God has said. Anytime something goes against what God has said, his laws, his commandments, his principles, then, you know, you have to question it and you it's OK for you to question it. All right. Let's see. Uh, nothing good can come from an evil spirit of D. So I'm examining the fruit of your spirit. I love it. OK, so man's truth. You're going to examine it by the fruit that it produces. I like that. So man's truth, judge it by the fruit it produces, because there's some things that we have put into place. They are good. I mean, you know, they're, they're, it's good that you put them in place. Like I talk, let's just use that analogy. People taking their shoes off. That way your carpet doesn't get too dirty and you don't have to worry about those things like that. So that's why people take their shoes off to preserve the cleanliness of your coffee or your floors, not to scratch your floors off up if you have hardwood floors. So that's the reason why people do that. So man's truth does have some good things about it. So you examine the fruit. I love it. Examining the fruit. 
what is man's truth? You can guide it or you can you can um, examine it and and and. and by the fruit that it produces. And that's a good thing. I love that. Now, I like that, Mary Ray. God's truth is in this word. Study and pray and ask God to help you stand. I like that as well. So the, not only do you hear it, but study and pray about it. Because there's some truths in the Bible that sometimes we don't understand what what is saying. We don't understand or we don't know. That it, it doesn't maybe meet us where we are. And so we don't think it's relevant. And so sometimes we, we push it away, but pray about it as well. Don't just hear the word. Pray about it as it takes root in your heart so that you can apply it to your everyday life. You know, there's some things that, that we may have learned some years ago. I know in Sunday school classes, some things that I learned some time ago that I just did, you know, maybe back then it didn't seem like it fit. But as I got older, I could draw from it because it really did mean something. It really, you know, is important in my life. Didn't need it then, but I need it now. Anybody else have that? You know, you've heard some scriptures. They, you've meditated on them. It didn't mean anything then, but you need it now. It took on more value as you've gotten older, as you've grown faith by faith and glory to glory. Okay, let's hear. Uh, Pastor uh, Carter says, the Holy Spirit gives us instruction on the ability to differentiate between what is of God and what is of man. It takes building a relationship with Christ. Relationship, relationship. I love it. I love it. That's right. Look, getting to know him. So you would know what Christ is actually saying. You know, you can hear the word of God and know it. You can know it. And I don't mean just hear the word of God like, you know, you know, in the in the beginning was the word, the words with God, not the scriptures, but literally know the voice of the Lord by spending time with him, just like you do with other people. You know, if somebody says, you know, Bishop Maynard said this, I kind of know what Bishop Maynard said and what Bishop Maynard didn't say. You know, I can I can kind of tell, and I can tell too when somebody has altered his message. Why? Because I've been knowing him for so long. And so I know his voice. I know his voice audibly. And I know his voice, in his, even in his, pen, in his penmanship, I know his voice. So when somebody gives me something, said Bishop Manning told me to give this to you, I know if it's handwritten, I'm like, that's not his writing. Or even if they send me an email, I'm like, mm, Bishop Manning didn't say that. <laughs> I can tell that because I spent time with him. So that's the same thing, too. When you spend time with God, you should be able to know the difference between the two of them. Say, my feelings are about respect of others. When they don't show you the same, like you said, pray about it. That's good. That's very good. So if a man, the way a man's truths are, she said that she that she um, can tell just by the way that they entreat her. Now, she's going to respect him because the word of God tells us to love. But she also wants to make sure that she's getting re that's reciprocated. So knowing that and when people say that, you can tell again by their fruit. Man's truth, you should judge by their fruit. Uh, I try man's truth by the word. If it doesn't line up, I will listen. But within my spirit, I pray rebuke. Yes. And that's the Holy Ghost to grant understanding and guidance to the individual as well as myself. I love it. I may hear you. Doesn't mean I'm understanding. Doesn't mean I'm receiving. I may hear you. But I'm also going to put that spiritual guard up to make sure that filter to make sure that whatever is not supposed to be in me that I don't receive. And it's OK. Let me just get, let me give you permission that it's OK that you don't have to receive everything that man has said to you. It's OK to say, you know what? I don't receive that. And I'm going to move forward, you know, and not receiving it. I hear you, but I'm not receiving that. All right. So let's go to verse three, Romans uh, 10, verse three. For not knowing about God's righteousness, which is based on faith and seeking to establish their own righteousness based on works. They did not submit to God's righteousness. See, this is what happens um, um, when they don't even understand the righteousness of God, which is based on faith. You can't do it without it. And so if, if somebody is asking you to do something and it does not require faith, whoo, Paul is saying that it's not God's righteousness. You know, sometimes people are asking you, let's just do with a tire. You know, we have come. Let's please just make sure that we've come to this understanding. A tire will not get you into heaven. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you should or what you shouldn't do. But like if you go to church and the church prefers you to wear a certain attire and that's the church you attend. I believe in respecting the man of God, the woman of God who has set the house in order. So I respect them just like I respect someone when I go to their house and they ask me to take my shoes off. I respect you. 
Okay, but we do know that tire cannot get you into heaven. Okay. However, let's do this. If if you say that it's solely on a tire, if you say righteousness is solely on a tire, it can't be because it doesn't require faith to dress a certain way. Mm, this is down that 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 hit that hit differently. That hit that hit a good spot. <laughs> So if if uh, salvation is based on a tire only, then that's totally against what the word says, because righteousness is based on faith. If it doesn't take faith to get it, it's not righteousness. Doesn't mean that it's not good. Doesn't mean that it shouldn't be practiced but it does mean that it doesn't have any value in righteousness it is not a part of the righteous formula oh my god this thing is hitting me good today and so we can't we we have to make sure that what we're doing what we're preaching what we're teaching what we're demonstrating what we're sharing in the world today that is that is in the formula of righteousness and it requires faith. See, it takes faith. It takes faith. Listen to this, to love your enemy. That requires faith. To love your enemy, faith in God that your enemy is not going to turn around and do you wrong. That's faith in God that God you're going to handle my enemy so as I'm loving them and becoming vulnerable in front of them that God you got my back. That's the faith. Not faith in your enemy but faith in God that he's going to keep you and cover you and be with you while you move amongst the enemy's camp. That's where the faith is. So if faith is not in the formula, it's not in righteous. It's not righteousness. Woo, Jesus, that's good to mission. <laughs> I don't know about you. So if, if 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 taking my shoes off at your house makes you feel better and makes you feel comfortable, that's fine. But if you say to me, if you don't take your shoes off at my house, you're you're sinning. Now, mm -mm, I'm going to have to back up off of you right there. I'm going to have to say something. I'm telling you right there. I can't receive that. That's not sin. That's just your preference. It's not sin. <laughs> and that's what we have to make sure that when we're teaching, when we're out here loving on people, when we're out here trying to win souls to Christ, that we're giving them the truths, that we're giving them the formula for righteousness, for them to be in right standing with Christ. That's to live by faith. That faith has to be in the formula. Faith has to be in the formula. Hey, Ariana, how are you? Faith has to be in the formula. If it's not in the formula, it's not righteousness. That's just what Paul just said. I'm going to read it to you again because it was good for me. For not knowing about God's righteousness, which is based on faith and seeking to establish your own righteousness, which is based off of works, they didn't by 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 establishing it by it being based off of works. Now you're sub, you're not you can't even submit to God's righteousness. Your works and the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. So you're trying to do something with your own works, you can't even submit to God's righteousness. You can't even bring in your agenda to align with God's agenda without faith. Hear me, hear me, believers. You cannot bring your agenda and submit it to God's agenda without faith. So if you're working real hard, I'm working, trying to get my business together and I'm working on this relationship and I'm working really hard and there is no faith involved in it. Faith in God. God is nothing. He's not even in the business plan. He's not in your practices. He's not in your principles. He's not in the relationship. He's not in your conversation. You can do it all day long. All you're doing is spinning your wheels. You cannot submit it unto God's righteousness. Because there's no faith. So we have to know that. Everything that we do, business owners, let me talk to you. God, seek the Lord. Ask him what to do and how to do. 
I think I've told you all this before. In 2019, I made a statement. I said, I'm shutting my business down. In 2019, I said, I'm shutting my business down. I was actually talking to my uh, accountant uh, the other day. And she was saying to me, we were just going over my taxes for the last few years. And she said, you know, she said, I don't, I don't think, think I found any revenue for you in 2019. It's because I made a statement in 2019. I think I'm just going to shut my business now. I'm not doing anything. I'm not even generating any money. 2019 decided to go inactive. In 2020, I, I activated again. And so I reactivated my business. In 2020, my business took off. Not seeking God. Didn't even ask the Lord. Just made a statement, a blanket statement. Just let, released it out of my mouth. But I had to come back and ask the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do? 2019, I, I remember I'm just sitting down and talking to him. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And, you know, with my life. You know, just start talking to him about all these aspects. Just about life. We're just seeking him across the board, the landscape of my life. And in 2020, business took off. Now, not having him in my plans, not even walking by faith. He told me, I told you to start that business. <laughs> That's what he said to me. I told you to start that business. So you started the business. You didn't keep me in your business. So I had moved faith out of my business. But I had to pull it back in. Again, like I said, you can't have a prayer life with no fruit. You can't have faith without fruit. You can't have a prayer life and you're not only cussing, but cursing anything that God has put into motion. Woo, that's good. So you have to make sure faith, faith must be in the formula to be in the right standing with Christ. Okay, let's see. Man's truth. Let's go back over here. See, man's truth will always come from what is done according to works. It will never stand for what is commanded to us by God. Oh, that's good. Because man is about working. That's part of the problem now. It's about working. Everything's about working, churning, just all this physical labor. And God is about the spiritual labor, spiritually walking according to the truths of God by faith. Okay, let's pick up these next scriptures here. Let's go to verse uh, four. For Christ is the end of the law. It leads to him and its purpose is fulfilled in him for granting righteousness to everyone who believes in him as a savior. So at the end of it all <laughs> is Christ. And so if, if, if whatever we're doing if Christ is not it, is Christ is not the objective. If he, if he's not at the finish line, then really honestly, I don't know what you're doing it for. So they say only what we do for Christ will last. I said that to you all. The songwriter said that at the end of it, it's got to be about Christ. And so if I think if we could keep him as the focal point, I think we, we would kind of change some of the steps that we take in in life. I, I found this to be true. <laughs> then you keep Christ as a focal point. So I'm loving you because I want Christ to get the glory. Um, I'm in business so I can demonstrate Christ. I go to church so I can worship Christ. I, I work out so I can keep the temple so that Christ can live in my temple so I can be healthy for Christ. So if you keep Christ at the, at the center as the focal point of everything that you do, I tell you what, I think that you will be far further along than where you are now. But when you when you get when you make it cloudy, when we cloudy the waters, and when we remove Christ from the center, from the focal point, when we cloudy the waters, and and we don't lift Christ, we don't keep Him. At, 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 at the center. We don't keep him as our balancing, uh, uh, the meter that balances things. He keeps the scales balanced. When we, when we remove Christ from the formula, I'll tell you what, it just messes things up. And, and I know that, you know, I've been guilty of it. I'm not talking to you because I just, you know, dot every I and cross every T. I've been guilty of it where Christ has moved to the, to the left or to the right of my life. But Christ has to be at the center. He has to be that focal point, what I'm doing. Christ, are you pleased with what I'm doing? Are you pleased with my lifestyle? Are you pleased with my business? Are you pleased with the message? Are you pleased with the ministry? Are you pleased with this, with what I'm doing, with what I'm saying? Are you pleased with my conversation? 
Are you pleased with my movements? So if you just check it, balance it again, you know, bounce it up against Christ. My goodness. Bounce it up against Christ and see where it stands. You know, if you do that, hmm, I think it'll work out for you. I know I found that uh, what I do with Christ is just far greater. But when I've done some other stuff, my goodness, I'm telling you, I've made a mess of some things. But Christ must be the objective of everything that we do and that we say. So keep Christ as the, as the focal point. OK, let's pick up a few more scriptures. Um, it says for Moses writes that man who practices the righteousness, which is based on law with all this intricate demands, shall live by it. Six, but the righteousness based on faith, which produces a right relationship with him, says the following. Do not say in your heart who will ascend to in heaven, that is to bring Christ down. And then, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead, as if we had to be saved by our own efforts doing the impossible. But what does it say? That the word is near you and in your mouth and your heart, that is the word, the message that bases of faith, which we preach. And I, I got to go in here, verse nine, before I forgot to put it in there. Verse nine, uh, because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power and authority and majesty as God and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, Misha, what is this all saying? What it's saying to us is that um, for Moses writes, who practices the righteousness, which is based on the law, not based on faith, but based on law, you're going to live your life that way. So if you're trying to do righteousness based off the law, you know, I'm doing it because you said do it. You know, don't don't wear pants. Don't drink this. Don't wear that. Don't wear red lipstick. Don't. And I'm laughing because I got red lipstick on. Don't uh, don't don't uh, do this. Don't do that. All the do's and the don'ts that we have this list for and says, if you do that, then you're not you're not doing that. That's how you're going to live. Not only will you live it, but you'll judge others according to it. So we can tell by your lifestyle. You did it. Oh, and oh, let me. I'm going to pick that up in just a minute. But those people that's based off of the relationship with Christ, your whole objective is to be in a good standing and right relationship with Christ. Then your life will live according to that. That's what you will live by. You will live according to that. And, and you won't get into the place where you're trying to judge what people are saying. And so that's what was going on in the church at Rome. You had the Gentiles and the Jews were coming together. They were trying to create this church of unity, of cohesiveness, and all of them were coming from different perspectives. And so what, what was going on was they were challenging each other's beliefs. You know, well, do you believe this? Do you believe that? Well, how do you believe? And so Paul was saying to them, listen, at the end of the day, if you confess with your heart, and I mean, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, then you're saved. Because they were like, well, do you believe, you know, that Jesus died? Do you believe that Jesus was like, so what are you saying? You know, how are you believing? And we have that going on now. You know, what do you believe? Do you believe that you can baptize in the water? Do you believe you're baptized by the spirit? See, when you get into all of those type of different conversations and trying to challenge people's belief, now, believe, understand this. You do need to know what people are, what they do believe. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, Christ is a focal point. When you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, because out of your heart flows, out of your heart, your mouth speaks. So if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, he died for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you can confess this, that Jesus died on the cross for my soul salvation and was raised from the dead, the Bible says you are saved. So we've got to make sure that we are not judging people and holding people accountable for more than just this. The salvation process has begun. When you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that he died on the cross was raised from the day, dead for your soul salvation. By faith, you're saved. By faith, you're saved. So now the process begins. And then, so there's some cleaning and some things that need to happen afterwards, but you're automatically saved. And that's what we have to come to the to that place. There's going to be some things that's going to start shedding off. 
And there's going to be some putting on and some putting off. So putting off of the old man and putting on of the new man. But the problem that we have is we want people to say, I'm saved. And all of a sudden we want people to strip, get naked, and then come back all dressed up in like this. It doesn't work that way. That's where that faith comes in for us. That's when we have to make sure that we keep Christ as the center and the focal point so that we can truly love people for themselves. Now, I want to go back to this because I'm getting ready to hit, I'm getting ready to hit hard as, as Bishop Manderson said, I'm going around the corner and so to hold on. So I'm going to steal that from him. But I need to hit hard here because I believe that as believers and church goers, that sometimes we've done a disservice. We've done a disservice to our generations and next generations and next generations. And to also people who have left the church, we've done a disservice. Because we have taught that when you come into the church, that it looks one way. And when we go out of the church, it's sometimes different. And what I mean by that is we focus so much on the outward man. And we told him it's by works. We demonstrated it through our actions. We preach it one way, but we demonstrate it through our actions. That is by works, the physical, the shouting and the dancing, you know, uh, whatever those things may be about our attire, about our hair, about our uh, presentation. And then we go out into the world and it's totally different. And they found out that all the things that they were trying to do to make sure that they were quote unquote saved, it didn't keep them. It didn't help them when they face life challenges. I said this on last Sunday in the pulpit at Cathedral Praise, so I'm going to repeat it. We taught young ladies that if you wore your dresses down to your ankle or below your knee and that you would dress with modest apparel, with that this would keep you. And we may not have said it that way, but we've said it. We've said it in our books. We've said it in the pulpit. And then we found out that teenage pregnancy and premarital sex and other things like that, that we really stand against was still happening because we really didn't teach young ladies and young men. Let me just pick that up because I'm not getting ready to put women and make women the only ones responsible for this and young men what to do when these urges come up, how to keep yourself when you have urges and you're not married, because it is natural to have urges. <laughs> so we, we probably need to get a little deeper in our teaching of what to do and then how to keep your body, how to keep your flesh, how to pray past these things, how to live according to the word of God, how to allow for the word of God to arrest your emotions and arrest your, your those urges so that you can keep yourself, how to stay before the Lord so that you can deny the flesh because it's natural for those things to come up. So what we did was we said, well, that's just a man. You know, he just managed and that's okay because that's just him. That's what he does. But you let a woman do something and she was fast. And I remember hearing that terminology when I was growing up. She just fast. She fast. Look at her around those, around those boys. Look at just fast. But we didn't teach what does that mean and then what to do with that. And so what happens is you leave, you go off to college or you leave your mom and dad's home or you go to school and those urges are there. And what we did was we taught young ladies, if you just keep your dress down, but you didn't tell them that you didn't, yeah, that dresses can come up. You didn't tell, we didn't teach them what to do when a, when somebody, when a man brushes across your breast. Oh, I'm going to get here because I'm not in church. I'm in my house. So brush across your breast and there's an urge that happens, this sensation that happens. We've got to start teaching those things. we got to teach men how to treat women. I laugh a lot of times when people talk about the frontal hug and the side hug. We need to teach men how to have a side hug. You know, <laughs> you know that you're not supposed to do that. And what happens when that when you do teach them how to do side hugs, teach them how to treat a woman. That she is God's chosen. So we teach our young men and then teach the young ladies. And yes, it starts at home. 
But the church has a responsibility as well to teach them how to carry themselves, how to date. Teach your child, your your young ladies. Let me say something to you. I appreciate the gentleman that pulls the seat out, that opens up the car door for you to make sure that you get in. But if it's solely on opening up car doors, people open up doors all day long and people open up car doors all day long and go home and are abusive. That does not make him a gentleman. What makes him a gentleman is that he te- te- treats you gently and he treats you like Christ does. Look for Christ, again, the center in everything that you do. Look for Christ. Sometimes our young ladies have a have, have we, we're not looking for the right thing because we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it. You know, we 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 went around such managed behavior for so long that we we normalized it. And we think that's what it's supposed to do. Somebody always whistling and hacking at you and you know, throwing out these unnecessary comments, and you hear it, and you begin to normalize it. And then you begin to crave it. Oh, can I step in here? We begin to crave it. And so when we don't get it, we wonder what's going on. And then the first time we hear from somebody who doesn't mean any good, that shoots it out towards us, then we find ourselves gravitating to that person that doesn't mean us any good. So we've got to treat, we got to teach our young ladies. And some of you all have done a fine job. I'm seeing your daughters and your granddaughters doing a fine job. But I know for myself, I have three beautiful granddaughters and I teach them, you are beautiful. You are pretty. Carry yourself a certain way. I I mean, when I'm spending time with them, I do. I tell them how to carry themselves. Walk with, you know, your shoulders back. You know, have confidence in the God in you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I need them to hear that. I need them to hear that from not just myself, but to hear that from their mom, to hear this so that they don't crave and they don't desire to hear somebody pay them a compliment. Because as soon as they hear it, then they're going to gravitate to that person. But if they get it built up enough, they will feel good about themselves that they don't find themselves in bad and unhealthy relationships. And that goes for men and women, boys and girls. Let's start teaching them. Let's start doing the right thing. Let's be the church that teaches righteousness, right standing, and not focus so much on the outward man, but build up the inward man so that they can stand up and be strong with confidence. We owe it. Listen, that's what conversations in the morning time, that's what we're here doing. That's what we're doing at on this platform and in this place. We want to encourage you so that you can live a successful life. So when you go out here, you're not looking and searching for things that will lead you into unrighteousness and unhealthy relationships. That goes with business. We can pick that up later, too. And sometimes we sometimes we're in business with people just because we're trying to make money. Not all money is good money. Some things you need to pass up. I just was uh, given the opportunity to to do a proposal uh, that probably would have yielded millions, multi millions of dollars if I would have handled it correctly. It could have, but I said, I can't do that. That's not, I can't do it. So I says, why? I knew that I counted up the cost and I said, that's, it's not going to be good for me. It's not going to be good for my business. Now see some of you all have been a girl, you better go get them coins. You better go get that cheddar. No, not, not all money is good money. That's okay. I said, well, I, I don't need, that's not aligning itself up with the Christ in me. And I probably don't need to do that. So not all money is good money. And we need to really start approaching that and start teaching it. So that's what we're going to, that's what this platform is for. <laughs> that's what conversation does. We can have those conversations in this setting and we'll have more of those. So, all right. So listen to this as we're excited. 10 years. I think I'm going to exit with that wonderful song that Deborah just created. I just love it, love it, love it. So I'm going to exit with that. Uh, but I want to encourage you all to continue to go forward. We're going to be celebrating 10 years all the month of October, talking about Faith Bishop Maynard is going to come on and share with us. Don't forget, we'll be celebrating his birthday, 80th birthday, December the 11th and 12th in Nashville, Tennessee. And you don't want to miss it. And so there's going to be some um, 
uh, uh, banners that are going to come out. There's going to be some social media uh, 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 marketing that's going to take place. And you'll get some emails and some text messages from me. So just get ready to celebrate as we celebrate these 10 years here, 80 years with him uh, on this earth. And we are just excited, excited, excited. So listen, as you continue to move throughout the rest of this week, remember to come off of unmute or come off of mute unmute your voice because your voice is powerful. Your voice is valuable and go out and speak some great things in this earth. I'm going to end with this song because some of you all didn't get to hear the intro and I want you to hear it. And so as we celebrate the 10 years, have a great one. I am excited about God and excited about you. So I'll see you all next Sunday at Conversations at 7 a.m. The journey began 10 years ago mm, With successful living as our goal We came together and formed a tribe To engage God's word so we can thrive Come and join the celebration, 10 years of inspiration. God's given us revelation every Sunday, one of the 10 years of conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Along the way we heard God say, get out of the boat and live by faith. He also said, come off a mule. Your voice is valuable, speak the truth. Come and join the celebration. Ten years of inspiration. God's given us revelation every Sunday morning for ten years. It's a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years have passed and we're on the move. Can't wait to see what God will do. We now know that it's worth the while. Living for Jesus makes us smile. Come and join the celebration. Ten years of inspiration. God's given us revelation every Sunday morning for ten years. The conversation, yeah, yeah. Every Sunday morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years of conversation, yeah.